distinguished career within the London Police Department. Right. And also, he comes from a family of the London cops that served over 100 years wow. at that place. Wow. Well, congratulations. So, uh, so I wish Rusty and his family well. Remember that old commercial goodbye, Rusty Jones? That's what I always think of when somebody's named Rusty. You don't hear a lot of Rustys. But all right, so Rusty's in it. Rusty and his whole family of cops, thanks for your service and I appreciate it. Have fun on your retirement. Absolutely. And we're following up, and people are going to say, uh, you know, is, is this a repeat of last week's show? But yeah. it's, it's really not. All right. Um, I think it's today's newspaper, the, the day. Yeah. Uh, the headline of New London Man Sentenced in 2019 Shooting Outside of a Bar in London. Okay. So this individual. Oh, this is the, this, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just so I can get my brain around this. This is the same guy involved in the Matthew Chew murder. No. Oh, this is a different. Th guy. This is a different guy with a gun. Okay. So this guy uh, obviously had some type of problem with some people in a bar, yep. you know, early morning hours on Bank right, Street, right. and decided that as he drove away, um, he was going to fire a firearm from yep. within the car he was driving into the towards these several people that he had some type of altercation with. All right. Um, the, the, the problem with it, Lee, is he uh, was a nine-time convicted felon. It's unbelievable. And uh, one of the times, well, one of the felony convictions was he stabbed somebody 12 times. And um, so for this new, new charge with the gun, mm -hmm. he gets four years in prison. So uh, the, the scary thing is he's out on bond. And he doesn't have to come in to serve his sentence until May 13th. <laughs> I, I hope, you know, he's on his best behavior yeah. between, you know, now and May 13th. And um, I guess, you know, I always get back to the same point. Is, is, this a se is the guns a Second Amendment problem where they have to go after the people who have legally owned guns? Or... Should we concentrate more on the people that shouldn't have the guns and we catch them in the act of violence or, or possessing guns when they they know they can't have the guns? Uh, uh, my two cents on this is, you know, this is easy for me. I'm, it, this is a no-brainer. You're a nine-time convicted felon. Yes. You're a violent convicted felon. You've stabbed someone 12 times. Yes. You shoot at somebody. The only reason why you're not in on a murder charge is because you have bad aim, yeah. right? This, this you don't shoot a gun at somebody without the intent of killing them. I assume. So, please, somebody explain to me how the prosecutor only gets four years in this case. And make that's just. I and I guess the question, you know, what if what if the bad aim hit someone in your family, in my family, or anyone's family? It's just right. an innocent person walking by, or even his intended targets. I don't right. know if they had words in, right. in, in, in a restaurant or in a right. bar. Um, what, what do you feel that, why is this person out? I don't know. I, I, I don't understand why you, you treat these guys with kids' gloves. And, and again, the far left is going to say we need more, you know, we need more gun laws. Right. Well, it seems to me the gun laws worked with this person because, you know, he was caught with a gun firing it, but I don't know. Is it more important to go after you know people's legal right to possess guns under the Second Amendment, or is it you know more important to you know pat someone on the wrist for right. you know to being a I you know I don't know the total background, but it seems to me that you're shooting at someone, you've already stabbed someone, you've been convicted nine times of felonies, you know you're a danger to society. <laughs> no, this now and by the way, a nine-time convicted felon, you you have a felony on your record. It's a bit. It's supposed to be a big deal. It's a big deal. At least you know. Depending if it's a violent felony, which I assume stabbing someone twelve times is a violent felony, it's supposed to be impossible to wrestle around any other in, you know infractions. I thought. I thought. Tough yeah. to get a job. Can't can't carry a gun. But right. obviously, you know, the last two weeks we talked about people who you can't carry a gun, yeah. but they are anyway. Yeah. I, I, it's astonishing to me. And I, I'm out of lost words. I'd like to know, and again, I'll open the phone line, lines up here. If there's anybody out there, I'd love to hear from somebody who thinks that this is a good idea. I'm back, I mean, this, I can't even believe the most progressive people, Todd, right? The people who 
are as far away from me. I mean, you're more middle than I am, but if, as far from me as possible would think that this is okay. Like this guy being out in the street is okay. And I'll go one step further. If people think this is a Second Amendment problem, we have too many guns. Yeah. No, because obviously this person didn't go into the you know your local, you know Ron's guns, right. fill out the paperwork, right. you know whatever. And I don't care about backgrounds or whatever they have to do. Make sure you know who's getting the gun. Right. He, he, he didn't get the gun by the legal means. No. No. So why are you punishing people who you know want to possess guns and and, and aren't felons? Have the legal right to do right. so. Right. As a police officer, and I'm, I know what the answer is, because I know oh, just about every single police officer that I've ever asked this question has the same answer. But I'm sure, or maybe I'm wrong, wouldn't you rather have a well-armed uh, legal citizenry who is able to defend themselves when you guys can't get there, and have more punitive action for folks who use firearms in an illegal way? Like, if you're, you're caught with a firearm, you know, busted into a liquor store, or you know, hold it up to somebody's temple to grab a, a purse. That's like a, a minimum mandatory for me. No or yes? I, well, I think it, everyone has the legal right. Um, if, again, if you followed your life in the proper boundaries, you, you know, you haven't violated laws, you haven't been convicted of felony, yeah. or, you know, there's domestic violence, there's other things that, that, you know, would eliminate you from that, then you have a right to defend yourself. I mean, if you're leaving here and you're gonna go to any store or mm. something, you walk in, and I don't know, somebody's robbing the store or pointing a gun at you. You, you know, you have the right to defend yourself. Right. And I don't think that people should lose that right because these people are running around with the, with illegal guns. Right. I mean, think about it. I just, what Todd just says, it just makes perfect sense. I mean, you, you think about the idea of you're going to make it more difficult. Because a, a criminal is not going to go through the process to get that gun. I mean, that gun is not, he did not obtain that gun legally. He can't have a gun. Correct. Right? So he can't buy one someplace. No. Because he's a convicted felon. So by having a gun on him, he's breaking the law already, so he got it illegally. A law, you know, a law abiding citizen who just wants to protect his family and goes through the right you know, the right steps. That's the guy that's really being hurt with all these additional gun laws. No question about that. Yeah, absolutely. Eight six zero four six four nine four nine zero. Uh we're we're running a little film in here, so I don't know who's on the phone, but we'll roll the dice and see who it is. Good morning, who's this? Hey Gordon, hey, how Gordon, are you? How man? are you, bud? Thank you, Gordon. If you're talking about this as though it's, it's well, you're talking about it right, but it's so apparent here, the most progressive city in one of the most progressive states, that not only don't we punish felons, we put them in our school system so they can do really bad things. Mm. Well, it's funny you say that, Gord, because I uh I have uh, a, another couple articles here where one, uh, Mike DeMauro did a nice article on uh, kids and police officers can be, you know, really be friends in school after all. And it's, uh, you know, the Waterford PD doing great things in, in some of their schools. And then I have a second one where Norwich hires the third school resource officer for, uh, for their school system. But I guess New London always knows better than everyone else because they don't even want cops in the schools because they're intimidating. And we happen to graduate the same year from school work. We had people, you know, in the schools. It didn't bother me any. No, because we weren't really doing anything that wrong. Well, I'm glad you said that wrong, Gord, but I appreciate that. Yeah, we have to be careful to quantify or qualify that. Uh, honestly, you know, you never know what the other team is up to, right? You don't know how to define a win. For us, a win would be safe, school, <clears throat> civic, and educated, and prepared for life. For them, it's how do we get paid? How do we keep getting paid and keep the state out of our business if police become part of the show? Well, coming from you know two people here in the studio who don't have children and talking to someone who does, I can only say if I had children and I had the choice whether to have an armed policeman in the school with my children or not, after what I've seen in this country, there's 100% that I want an armed police officer in that school. What's the, I ask you both, what's the negative to having an armed it, police I'll, officer? I'll go first and let Gordon go after because he lives in the city, but it, it, 
they come out. What, what was wrong with having, uh, you know, an armored vehicle? Nothing. That say someone, Nothing. It doesn't look good. It doesn't fit the far left narrative. It's BS. It's total BS. It makes no sense. It's it's it, it's nonsense. Gordon, your thoughts on that? Totally agree. I, I mean, again, it, it, I'll repeat myself. If, if I had kids, I, I would certainly. I mean, haven't these people on the far left seen enough? What could happen in in the time a cop has to get to the school? It. Sure. Sure. It. It's a com This is such a common sense issue, though. It doesn't. There's no negative. Anybody who wants to tell me there's an intimidation factor is just act, acting like a moron. But, Sorry. But, Gore, the reverse on it is when something happens in school, when, you know, when you need law enforcement, what do you do? I mean, it's, it's obvious, but you call them and they have to come anyway. Well, I can give you the insight. I mean, I, I've been going almost a year now, but I can tell you this from my knowledge when I was there, that New London, you know, the Board of Education uh, or the superintendent, um, if they had a school resource officer, wanted the school resource officer to be in plain clothes and to wait in the central office in case needed. And, and I give it to the administration of the police department. They said, no way. Anyway, Gordon, we got the point. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the call. Always great talking to you. Gordon will be on with me tomorrow. And, uh, it, and it's not like it's, you know, the London has been the greatest school system without problems internally criminalized within the schools. Right. You know, so it, I always like quit. You don't want us there until there's a problem, then come in and clean it up. How are you supposed to build a better relationship? Let's, let's us make this assumption, and that's in air quotes, that Perfect the relationship example. between police and kids are bad. Well, stick cops in there. Let them, you know, walk around, talk to kids. You know, see somebody who's having a bad day. Sit down and chat with them. What's the matter? What's going on? Something going on at home? Whatever it is. Well, and Gordon brought up a great point of what is what is these what what are these children being um, taught? Where we don't want the cops around. We don't trust them. We right. don't like them. Well, you know, and then the shortage of police now. Then then you think some of these you know kids want to be a cop? No, they're they're taught or right. told that the police are bad. Right, 100%. All right, let's try uh, line two. No idea who this is. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Oh, Coach, what's going on? Got sweatshirts on, coaches. I'm not loving it.
Co Coach, let me jump. Let me jump in real quick. And you know, you've been at different school systems. What is Waterford and Fitch and Norwich or and, and still whatever East Lyme, whatever school system that all have these? What What is New London? Do they have a secret that, that the rest of them don't know on why New London doesn't want to have one? Or, or you or you face the consequences. Yes. And I believe, Coach, I believe he carjacked someone along the way. He'll probably be cleared. But, you know, they dragged the guys through the mud, they ruined his career, and all that. How, how, did, how did he know that this guy wasn't going to start his car and then run some people over there or whatever? I, and, and I'll add a, a couple of things in coach. What, what did they learn that they didn't know two years ago? This, this didn't happen yesterday, you know? And I, I, I've never seen this before. And uh, I, you know, again, I've been out of it for a year, and I don't know if maybe uh, um, Chief Mike Finkelstein will know a little more at 8:30. But I've never seen anything like this where they have not announced the charges. He turned himself in last night, and no one has the charges against the trooper. Crazy, Coach. Great call. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach. I, I, go ahead. <laughs> Coach, I'll see you later. Thanks, man. Good call. I'll talk to you later on. Maybe we'll get you back. Hopefully get you back on in here by the end of the week. One more quick one before Todd has one other story. He's got to try to get to you. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, Dr. Lee and Todd. It's old Dan. Hey, Danny. Dan, What's up, buddy? Oh, I guess three, sort of three quick points. One, what Coach said, I think it's so important that that girl was arrested in school because kids got to be shown consequences early on so that they know there's going to be consequences for bad behavior. 
or else the bad behaviors uh, you know, become worse. It's Gatorade today, it's, it's stealing something tomorrow, and then it's shooting in a crowd of people the next day. So that's number one. Second, we, we, we don't need more gun laws, like Todd said, or gun control laws. We need criminal control laws. And we need criminal laws enforced and keep people off the streets. And you know what? You, you talked about this guy, the nine convicted felon. A guy won presidency. I don't know, about 30 years ago, based on a guy named Willie Horton. Why the hell doesn't Bob, Mike France, all the Republicans find, find this, this guy could be our Willie Horton. And we just keep telling the same story. We, we could probably find a different Willie Horton every day to illustrate the absurdity and actually the dangerous dangerousness of liberal policies. Uh, but the, and lastly, the New York Times, even, and, which is liberal, did this quote a couple days ago, Democrats are broadly moving away from bolder calls for justice and police reform in response to rising crime and bad polling in their areas. It's bad polling that's causing them to, to change their tune a little bit. And they obviously, they don't, they don't care about human life. And their, pro, their policies, Todd has proven them wrong. Now the New York Times, New York City, every major city, they've been proven wrong. If, if we can't illustrate this and win, uh, then, it, then it's over. I, I agree, Dan, and, and when you see some of these horrific acts that are uh, being perpetrated by these suspects, how many of them don't have a, a horrible background? I heard the Waterbury chief of police, uh, they've been having a a surge in violent crime and he went right on it and, and, and pleaded that the, the people that are doing the crime when they catch them are dangerous people that are usually on probation, parole, some, you know, and either out on bond and, and we, we don't keep people incarcerated like we used to that are a danger to the public. Yep. Dan, listen, I gotta let you go buddy today. Thanks. So sorry for the quick one, but uh, we got to get to the end of the show or end of the segment. Did you want to just share quickly the well, uh, David Collins story? We'll, uh, I think we'll take it next week, but to anyone that's going to uh, read the day paper today, there's a very interesting uh, story that uh, my buddy Dave, uh, Daisy Collins, uh, got his, his panties in a bunch, I guess, because he wanted a, a body camera video yeah. of an incident involving a London police officer, and the city wanted to charge him over $600 for it. So we can get, we can get into the details yeah. of it, um, about what they would call about, you know, because I was involved in the negotiations between the city and the union on, you know, what needs to be redacted. Right. Uh, okay. We'll get into some of those, you know, the obvious, you know, sexual assault victim. You, right, you, right, right. So they do have to, before they're, you know, released on their FOI, you know, someone has to look at it and make sure some of these things, you know, that need to be redacted aren't on there. And I think people are Part understanding that, and I think we can go into it in a little more detail uh, next week. All right, buddy. Good, good job today. I appreciate it very much. A lot of good info. And uh, you can watch that video later on on my YouTube page, and I'll throw it up there after the show. All right, John LaBoutlier next. Stick around. Good job, man. That was good. Perfect.